Hello, I'm Joe Neville, back with another video for all you networking people interested in the exciting new world of network automation, APIs and Python. We're going to be taking a look at a new feature for Aruba OS Switch that goes by the name of AnyCLI and I will be giving you a demo of it later in the video. Okay guys, I'm assuming here that you understand why network automation is such a hot topic in the industry today what an API is and why learning Python is awesome. If you are a little bit lost with these three points, don't worry, I've made a number of videos about these. Links in the description below to get you up to speed. Okay, the too long didn't read is that having an API or networking kit is a good thing because we can fire requests at the device and get back structured data that we can use to monitor, configure and automate our network operations. Stage one in world domination, I'm sure you will agree. Now we use code to send the requests and handle the response data and Python is the coding language of choice to complete these actions. Okay, that's your recap. Now on to the new info. One of the things about APIs is that they are only good for us if they offer a wide range of information that we can access with our request to the device. And the thing is that the CLI has been the primary means of communicating with networking devices since forever and APIs specifically for networking kit are relatively new. So while we have an API on Aruba OS switches and that's a great thing, the API doesn't offer us up the full range of data and config features that the CLI does today. Now speaking honestly, for all the excitement around APIs, if the API doesn't cover a feature, we can't use it for management and configuration of that feature. So we are back to using traditional network management methods such as the CLI, SNMP, or we could rely on a more programmatic but essentially screen scraping approach by employing the NetMeco library to in Python to SSH into a device and issue the CLI commands for us. Now, if you're not familiar with NetMeco and why not, please do check out my NetMeco video, which I will link in the description. But the thing is, it's a real buzzkill um, using different approaches just for different features. For example, if we're using the API for VLAN management and CLI for OSPF, that's not the brave new world of automation that we want. Sure, if we go with the NetMeco approach, it is programmatic, but the whole SSH into the box, authenticate, issue the command, parse the output is slow and, well, it's different. We're trying to make our lives easier here, not harder. And multiple methods of communication with a device based upon feature X versus feature Y, that's not what I call easier. Wouldn't it be better to have a unified API call approach for all features and all commands on a device? That's where any CLI comes in. It's a new feature that combines the approach of querying the API via calls but with the breadth of the CLI. In essence, any CLI allows us to build our API calls and insert normal CLI commands into the data part of the call, which will be operated on by the switch as though they are part of the CLI. That means we can have a unified approach whether the API has coverage or not. A quick word on support before we move on to the demo. Any CLI is supported in the latest release of Aruba OS Switch. So it's 16.04, which was released a few weeks ago. Okay, that's it for the introduction. Let's get into the development environment and have a quick look at the code. Okay, here's my development environment. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I am a fan of Fedora Linux. That's what I'm running here. I've upgraded my Fedora 25 box to a Fedora 26 recently. I should say that everything that I'm running here, you can run on Windows. Okay, over on the right here, we've got my Linux terminal. So I will SSH onto my box. I'm going to be running my API calls to an Aruba 3810M. Let's log into it.
to a show version for you. There you go. It's KB1604.0008. I've recently upgraded to that code. I'll show you the configuration. It's pretty basic. Okay, uh, make that a bit bigger. So you can see we've got SSH on routing. I put a loop back on there. Uh, VLAN 2, that's how I'm accessing the box. And I've put OSPF on there so that we've got a bit more to see when we do our calls. And then over on the left here, I've got my PyCharm, so that's the IDE that I like to use, and here's the code. So it's just a simple script for building the call, authenticating, and then sending the call with the command to the device. There's quite a bit to take in there, especially if you're quite new to Python. So what we will do first is we'll just go through some slides which show you visually what we're doing. Here we are. Okay, so this is step one of any CLI. So this is me on the left over here. I've got my Fedora VM running PyCharm and I'm sat on, essentially this is like the management networks. This is 192.168.2.253. And my Aruba 3810M, that is dot one in the same subnet. Okay, and if you've watched any of my other videos about how we use the uh, API on Aruba OS Switch, first we need to authenticate. So we do that by sending a call to this URL. Notice that this is different from earlier versions. If you were doing any work on the 16.03, you would have been using version 1 there most probably. With the REST API, what we're using now is version 3, new in 16.04, that brings in this new functionality for us. So what we have to do is we send a call via, we build it in Python, we send it to our switch. That has to include our username and password, which we'll send across. This is just in the lab. It's all just um, open. There's no security on any of this stuff. So it, you'll notice it's, I'm just um, focusing on the functionality rather than making this um, hardened for production environments. So I'm just using HTTP here. So we'll be sending the username and the password in the clear because we're just playing around in the lab. Okay. Then we will get a response. If we've logged in successfully, we will get a response which includes a cookie back from the switch. Then we need to take that cookie and include it in our new call to the device, uh, which we're sending to this new URL. So we're sending it to uh, v3 slash CLI okay and we include the cookie but also what we do is we include our command so that's the fifth step and I'm just going to do one very simply I'm going to do a show IP root okay and then the switch will send back the response from that so it's, it's pretty simple I just wanted to um, show you again to refresh your memory that you need to do the authentication first to the login sessions get that cookie and then use that for our calls okay then the final step is that we get our response back and one of the things about this is that it isn't sent back as a normal string, that a readable string. It's sent back with a type of encoding. It's a binary to text encoding called Base64. And what we need to do is, so if we if we want to read that, if we want to print that to the screen and do any checking, if we want to do any parsing on it uh, and it be humanly readable, we need to decode that. And that's all pretty simple and you'll see those steps in the code. Okay, so let's jump into the code. Right, here we are. I've done it as simply as I can. So we're not using any functions or anything. So it's just going to run through each one of these lines, starting from the top as we go down when I run this script. First of all, we've got some imports. So we've got import requests. We've got import JSON. Fine. Um, we've got this extra package that we want to include for the exceptions. We use that to make sure that we turn off any kind of warnings that might be displayed. That's pretty boilerplate stuff that we're, I'm using there. 
Okay, now we get into the more interesting part. So what I've done is I've, because we have to reuse this section, I'm just using a single IP address for this simple explanation. There's nothing dynamic in that first part of the um, API call. I have created, I've created an object called URL from this string, which I can then reuse. I've created another object called creds, and in that I have created the username and password as a dictionary and then the next part so this is the new part i've created a command and you just put it in like a string so show ip root as a string that creates the command object which we'll be referencing later so this next section here this is all of the authentication which if you've seen any of the other videos you'll already be aware of how to do this so i create a session for using the request library i create another object that's going to be response r for response um, and i have done a post to login sessions and i've included the credentials there uh, i've just got a timeout if anything goes wrong it will dump us out then i take the cookie response and I grab the cookie from that. Okay, so I'm sure you've already seen this stuff from the other videos. I've got some basic error checking there. Now, onto the next section. So what we're doing here is we're building the dictionary for uh, the cookie, referencing this cookie response here. So we put that into this to create this dictionary called cookie. And also I'm doing a very similar thing where I'm taking the command. So command from above, I'm putting that into a dictionary which starts with, so this is an important point, you have to build this dictionary um, object. So we've got, uh, it's just CMD and then you place your command in there. And I've created an object here by the name of C, which I will reference in the, uh, in the data of the, of the call. Then I've created this post command object. So here we are post, we're creating a, a request post. We've got the URL and important to note here that we're sending it to CLI. So remember it's this URL with the CLI um, added at the end. Headers equals cookie. So that's this part here, rounding into the header uh, for authentication. Then our data part, that's our command, that's the json.dumps there, that's C from here. So that's essentially our show IP root is being put into the header, combined with a cookie, and then sent off to the device. And what I've done here, just to step you through, I've printed out what will come back from this. So the response will be handled by this. The request library handles the uh, response back from the switch. It will be part of this post underscore command object. And I, I'm printed that out for you so let's let's run this what i'm going to do is i will just use the function within um within pycharm to run it okay so let us run any cli okay here we are this is what's come back so it's a dictionary those curly brackets again there so it's a dictionary and we get this back you can see you've got the key there as result underscore base 64 underscore encoded um, and then the value for that key is this so this is the base 64 um, it's a string there that we've received back as you can see if I scroll across I mean that's pretty huge and we can't really do very much with that Okay, so what we want to do is we want to decode that. So below what we have, I'll just uncomment these out, is the next section. So we've got some basic error checking there if the status code is not. So these are the, the um, HTTP response codes. Um, if we don't get a 200, then we print it there. Otherwise, what, what I'm doing is I'm just printing out the status code so that we know that we're good. Then I've created this response object, which is the uh, dictionary that comes back. We're going to take the value of this result base 64 encoded. So essentially what we're doing is from this, from this response here that you can see visually here, we're going to take that part, we turn that into response, and I'll take this printout, we don't need that 
for this section and we're going to decode it so this is the decoded r and as you can see this is using the uh base 64 function here to decode this and it will print it to the screen for us and i've included a type so you can see that this will be a string okay so let's run that all again and hopefully we should see uh, we should get our routing table from the switch so run any CLI and there we are okay so what I've got is I've got my status code and here we have my routing table I'll just show you that the route on the box so doing it via the CLI as you can see it's the same we've got these four entries if we go back you can see there we've got the four entries okay and interesting point is the fact that this type that's a string okay so this comes back as a string and you would need to parse it to get out the information to do some kind of logic checking on this data you know, scenarios such as whether a destination is known, you could do an if um, and an else based on that, or you could print these, or you could send them off um, to um, an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, you know, with this data. So my thoughts are that it's great for the coverage. It gives us access to the box via the all of the commands in the CLI, but you do need to be mindful that you're going to have to parse that output. It's not immediately accessible like a value from a, a dictionary. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to any CLI. I'll be doing more videos on this in the future and taking it a few steps further. I will post the script up onto GitHub and put the link in the description. And you may be thinking, OK, that's great for a single command. But what if I want to configure multiple commands? Up next, we're looking at another feature that's in 16.04. And this is the batch command. So essentially, you can create a batch, uh, a list of CLI commands that you can put together, encode and send as a single call to the device. So you can do multiple things thus taking this functionality a step further and giving us more ways to automate in our network. Okay, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching. My name's Joe Neville and goodbye.